Good afternoon. Dobar dan. In Belgrade, we are in a little tour, touring the whole region, uh, spreading the good news, uh, which I would also like to share with you. So, dear members of uh, the National Convention of the European Union, it is a great pleasure for me to be able to address you today in every challenging circumstances brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. This crisis has marked our lives in an unprecedented way, but it has not taken our attention away from the Western Balkans, a region that lies at the heart of Europe and is surrounded entirely by the European Union member states, has a clear EU perspective. This region is also a priority for us, for the EU, for the European Commission, and for me personally. That's why from day one, this Commission is working in support of the Western Balkans along three tracks. The first was that we have reinforced and renewed the enlargement process through a revised methodology to make the policy more credible for our member states and for the region. Second, on this basis, the decision to open negotiations with Albania and North Macedonia was taken and were made possible, and negotiating frameworks for both countries are now being discussed by the member states in the EU Council. And third, we are strongly focused on speeding up the economic convergence of the region with the EU. Through these three objectives, we don't just support our partners individually, we work for the whole region to the benefit of the people and the economies. As regards economic convergence, the pandemic makes it even more challenging. We have put our efforts first into providing significant emergency assistance to the region and second to help the economic recovery. Now, our focus is on supporting the longer-term socio-economic recovery and the economic convergence with the EU. There is an enormous gap in terms of economic development between you and the EU. The faster we close that gap, the faster we start creating resilient, strong, and sustainable market economies, the faster you will be able to join us. This week, the Commission has put on the table a large-scale economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans. The plan is designed specifically to boost the long-term recovery through a substantial investment package. This, is, this in turn will lead to sustained economic growth. It will support the implementation of reforms required to move forward on the EU path and bring the Western Balkans closer to the EU single market. With the plan, we aim to mobilize 9 billion euros of grant funding under the IPA 3 to support the economic convergence of the region with the EU. The investment package is structured around 10 flagship initiatives in key areas of crucial importance, transport, energy, environment, digital, the private sector, and youth. These are the areas that can contribute the most and the quickest to creating growth and jobs locally and to turn the whole Western Balkans into an attractive investment area. In addition, the investment capacity of the region should be boosted by the mobilization of a new Western Balkans guarantee facility with the ambition to potentially raise investments of 20 billion euros. In total, this means almost a third of the current GDP of the whole region. Investments leveraged by this support could potentially increase, by our, according to our conservative calculations, the region's real GDP by at least 3.6%. And most importantly, we are increasing grants versus loans, a key component in a moment when the fiscal space is tight. The package will allow the region over the next four years to emerge stronger from the COVID pandemic 
and lay the foundations for a developing, connected, competitive, knowledge-based, sustainable, innovation-oriented, and thriving economies in the Western Balkans with increasingly dynamic private sectors. What really does the plan mean for Serbia? For example, it means better roads and rail connections in line with the vision of connecting all the capitals of the region and the region with the EU. This will help Serbia to fully exploit its strategic location in Europe and generate more growth and jobs. Specifically, we will provide further support to the Peace Highway, where we want to see Serbia's part substantially advanced in just a few years. We will also aim to finalize the Niš railway bypass and upgrade rail connection between Serbia and Croatia. Rail route linking Belgrade to Podgorica will be fully rehabilitated, as will the one connecting Belgrade and Pristina. We will also support the mining the Sava River and addressing bottlenecks on the Danube. The plan also includes a huge environmental program which will benefit people in numerous Serbian cities, increasing their quality of life in a very direct way. And we will aim to complete the Trans-Balkan Electricity Transmission Corridor in Serbia. Furthermore, we will work on the rollout of broadband infrastructure in the region and increasing the competitiveness of the private sector. There will also be a strong focus on youth. Through the education system, we need to make sure that their skills match the needs of the labor market. We also need to turn brain drain into brain circulation so that young people can be one of the driving forces of prosperity for Serbia. The package overall will allow the region over the next four to five years to emerge stronger from the COVID pandemic and lay the foundations for connected, competitive, knowledge-based, sustainable, innovation-oriented, and thriving economies in the Western Balkans. With the economic and investment plan, we aim to bring the region closer to the EU and to foster regional cooperation. During the outbreak of the pandemic, the region showed it can work together. With the successful establishment of the Green Lanes, we saw inclusive regional cooperation at its best. This success should inspire the future of the regional cooperation and the regional integration. For the past six months, Western Balkan governments have been engaged in developing a new vision for the regional economic area. Therefore, I look forward to the leaders of the Western Balkans agreeing an ambitious action plan to, de to develop a common regional market at the SOFIA summit on the 10th of November. This is critical to increase the attractiveness and competitiveness on the region and turn it into an attractive investment hub, interesting also for global investors that are looking to reduce the distance to EU markets. Regional economic development and integration is not a detour on the European path, but a tool to enhance growth, to overcome the COVID-related economic crisis, to modernize the economies in line with the EU priorities and bring them closer to the EU internal market. It is an integral part of the region's EU accession process. However, boosting investment and economic growth in the Western Balkans will only be possible if governments firmly commit and implement fundamental reforms based on European values. Whether structural eco economic reforms, strengthening the rule of law, or improving public administration, these reforms are essential for an environment favorable to entrepreneurship, job creation, and sustainable investments. In this regard, the 2020 enlargement package which we adopted this week, together with the Economic and Investment Plan, provides a detailed overview of the state of play of fundamental reforms and gives also guidance on these reform priorities which remain at the heart of the EU accession process. These fundamentals remain the essential conditions that need to be met 
not only to make success of the plan, but also to move forward on the EU path. Allow me to say a few words on Serbia specifically. The report overall notes positive developments on the economy and on Serbia's alignment with EU legislation in different sectors. Before the crisis, Serbia was performing strongly in economic growth terms. The COVID-19 pandemic unfortunately impacted negatively on productivity and employment. However, your government's comprehensive financial package for the private sector has helped mitigate these effects. As a next step, Serbia needs to reinforce its effort to bring about long-term structural reforms, in particular on public administration and state-owned enterprises. On the functioning of democratic institutions and the rule of law, I hope that you will take our report as an encouragement to accelerate and deepen reforms. We have listed a number of priorities and recommendations, and all are important for Serbia to move forward. I trust you will make best use of the Commission's report as a guidance and springboard for reforms. I hope this will be useful in particular to the new government when in place. Taking these reforms forward is a sustainable way and will require a genuine dialogue across the political spectrum. I believe that society, the consensus in society on EU-related reforms will emerge and it is crucial for Serbia to move forward on its EU path. In this regard, I very much welcome the engagement of the previous parliament in the inter-party dialogue led by the European Parliament and encourage you newly uh, new, to be newly constituted parliament to continue to engage. In this light, I'm particularly pleased to be talking in front of you, the National Convention on EU today. An empowered civil society is a crucial component of any democratic system and should be recognized and treated as such by state institutions. The Convention is providing a valuable contribution to debate on Serbia's accession to the EU, monitoring and assessing the progress of accession negotiations. I encourage the authorities to use the full potential of the Convention's expertise and ensure, and ensure more systematic cooperation with the civil society. I am convinced that moving decisively forward on these and other reforms will pave the way for Serbia to open further chapters in its succession negotiations. Rest assured that you will have my full support in this endeavor. I am also looking forward to working with the Serbian authorities on the dynamic implementation of the Economic and Investment Plan. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Varhei, and uh, now I will kindly, kindly ask uh, our members to be very efficient and to use next 15 minutes for short comments or uh, for uh, questions. Uh, Cory, our coordinator for uh, chapters 17 and 32, Cory Udovicki. It is a pleasure to greet you, uh, Commissioner Rehey. Um, rightfully, the Commission intends to make the investment package, in a way, conditional on the progress of reforms. Uh, one uh, wouldn't want, uh, I mean, it's an incentive, but also one wouldn't want to be feeding, to so say, a captured, an increasingly captured state. My question is, though, if there is a slowdown, or even if there isn't a slowdown of reforms, is there an intention, is there a thought given to the necessity to somehow continue supporting, let's call it, independent development of the private sector, to make sure that development doesn't have to stop if reforms stop? Thank you, Cori. Commissioner, well, would you like to collect uh, more questions or one by one? If you, if you want, please answer now. Okay. Then. Well, um, we have very clear rules on uh, when and how we can provide assistance to third countries and when and how we can provide support 
uh, for accession countries. So the rules are very clear. And there are also very cl uh, clear rules on when and how we can uh, uh, finance uh, the private sector. And there are very strict uh, limitations on what we can do, and we will have to continue to, to work with th those rules. Thank you so much. Natusha Vučko Vučković, uh, Center for Democracy Foundation. Yes, thank you, uh, um, Commissar Vecheli. My question refers to the um, uh, critical remarks in the report that uh, refer to the, w to the way the government of Serbia or the officials of Serbia uh, communicate the EU accession process and the European integration process uh, uh, in general. And uh, there is uh, some kind of expectations I see from the report uh, on the side of the European Commission that this communication method changes. It is said that, uh, well, the communication of reforms, the communication of EU integration for process in Serbia shall be in a way improved so that it becomes less ambiguous and that the position of the European Union is the a priority economic and political partner of Serbia is well presented. What is exactly that the European Commission expects in that regard according to its uh, critical remarks and uh, recommendations? Well, I didn't, I didn't find our report uh, too strong on that point. Um, but what I can tell you is that um, it's difficult to, to have uh, the visibility if you don't have a positive program. Now we have. So I do hope that uh, with the economic plan that we put on the table now, uh, we, will, we will have uh, no, no case to explain because it is so obvious and apparent uh, that uh, it will speak for its, itself. If you look at the projects that we are providing, this will make it very clear uh, for the public uh, what the impact uh, of, um, of EU integration can be and is in Serbia. So I take it um, that from here on, uh, we are engaging in a new method, in a new experience, um, and I count on the support of the government on this because I think this will do uh, a major boost to Serbia, not only to the economy, but also to the public. Thank you. Uh, next is Jovana Spremo. No, 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 no. Jovana, because you are coordinator. And there is a couple. Thank you. Um, so uh, we are very pleased to see a very strong language in the part uh, related to chapter 23. Uh, I'm coordinating the, the working group for the chapter 23. Uh, however, my question would be how it will be stressed uh, uh, the importance of improving this area because we had a very limited progress and we had it also last year and as we can see the recommendations are not that much different than the last one. So basically how it will be communicated to the government that without this chapter it and without moving in this chapter everything else actually can stop and, and can be influenced by it. And the other thing that I, want th that I wanted to raise, uh, mainly all the recommendations by the working group have been included in the report, but however, we sort of oppose um, how the commission actually wrote in uh, the per perceiving the, the changes of constitution in the following year, because we already had uh, um, stated our opinion that the text that the Ministry of Justice provided in the last year was not something that the National Assembly should work with and the report actually states that it should rely on it. Well, um, as I said, this is the, maybe the first day of a new beginning uh, in our working. And um, I'm very hopeful that with the very strong majority uh, the government will have and with the new government in place, we can really speed up the work. We've been discussing this um, with Prime Minister Brnovic uh, just a couple of minutes ago. And um, I think that we are on the same page uh, when I'm telling you that, of course, work needs to be speeded up. And I see openness uh, on the side of the, of the Serbian government as well. Uh, yes, because of the elections, uh, we have been losing um, 
considerable time, uh, but it's very clear from our report where work would need to be delivered quickly uh, so that next year we can give a more positive uh, report. Thank you, Nemanja Nenadic, coordinator for Chapter 5, Transparency Serbia. Uh, thank you for this visit and announcement of the plan. Um, I would like to ask you one question uh, that is related to the plan you, you, you just presented and to the report. Uh, we, are, uh, we are very pleased or we are very pleased that, that uh, the report uh, identified uh, unacceptable practice of our government to conclude uh, public procurement and public private partnership contracts without implementation of the law and but through state to state agreements and through special law for uh, line infrastructure. Uh, and now uh, we see uh, that you announce actually some similar projects, reconstruction of railroads and uh, building of roads, etc. So uh, I, my, I have two questions. First is uh, uh, what will be procedure uh, for implementation of these infrastructure contracts you, you just announced? Um, and uh, second question is, uh, what do you think, uh, what will be further action uh, from European Union side uh, when it comes to implementation of huge infrastructure projects uh, uh, in Serbia by Serbian government but not through uh, public uh, procurement and public private partnership legislation? Would there be any, any uh, other step aside from identification of that problem in next progress report? Thank you. It goes without saying that um, if we are to deploy such a big investment plan, we need the public procurement rules to be followed. Our funds can only be spent if all the public procurement rules are followed, uh, and not only Serbian public procurement rules, but also our public procurement rules. Um, I think it is very clear from the plan as we have presented it. So we will pay out most attention, like we have done also in the past, uh, to observe all the rules. When it comes to uh, shortcomings in uh, public procurement uh, practices and laws relating to the spending of uh, Serbian state funds, of course, this is part of the assessment exercise that we are carrying out, and as you have seen, we made recommendations uh, to further align public equipment, public procurement practices and rules uh, with that of the EU. And I think that, uh, again, the plan will bring in a very positive incentive to comply, uh, because if you comply, you'll get a quite serious reward at the end. Thank you, Bojan Elek, Belgrade Center for Security Studies in charge for Chapter 24. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I would just, I have two points. Uh, the first would be that uh, the, the progress report shows systemic uh, deficiencies when it comes to the rule of law and with the in, uh, economic investment plan that you just presented. Uh, of course, we welcome it, but I would maybe like to reiterate how do you plan to assure the link between the rule of law progress with it? I mean, what exact mechanism would you use? And if I can uh, uh, make a point of what parts of civil society organizations in Serbia have been advocating for is in order to address these systemic difficulties, a, a separate comprehensive report similar to what happened in Macedonia, previous report, might, if, if, if there is a chance of uh, a report of that can be produced for Serbia and other countries uh, in the region. And the second point I would like to uh, ask you, there was a list of uh, civil society organizations produced by the Anti-Money Laundering Authority in Serbia uh, under the pretext of fighting uh, financing of terrorism and money laundering. Uh, my organization is on that list, several others. Uh, this, we consider this as a shrinking civic space where we were, I mean, in, in Serbia, a part of uh, uh, efforts to shrink it further. And it has been mentioned in the progress report. Maybe if you can comment on that and the actions of the authorities in this regard. Thank you. Well, I start with the, with the second question. I'm not familiar with this, so I, I cannot give you a response. Uh, but um, I will uh, be meeting the government, so I will ask um, what this is. I, I, I need to know more, so I don't want to uh, engage on that question. On the first one, 
I think that the rules are very clear. In the methodology, you find all the levers that we have if the rule of law uh, reforms are not advancing as they should be. Um, you also have really clear uh, rules when it comes to uh, a deterioration or in the rule of law situation so that when instead of making progress there is backsliding. And these are the rules that we are going to be following. There are no additional rules necessary. Uh, and all, the same applies for the enlargement process. Naim Leo Beshiri, uh, representative of Working Group for Chapter 35. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the question is uh, maybe similar to, to, my previous, uh, to the previous speaker, uh, but would you advocate for withholding the financial support the Commission is giving to Serbia, regular and the new possible, uh, if the reforms are not being made or expected, especially uh, since the, uh, the report uh, you're representing us now in the Chapter 35 is saying that Serbia should come to the agreement without any further delay? If the government do not uh, reach the agreement in a feasible future, uh, will you advocate for, uh, for withholding the support from the Commission? Thank you. As I said, but you can ask me the same question I don't know how many times. I still have the same answer to you. There are very clear rules in the methodology what can be done uh, when there are shortcomings in the rule of law area and when there are no progress or there's backsliding. So I think the rules are very clear. There's no need for additional rules uh, on this economic uh, recovery plan. Um, and I think it's quite obvious uh, what is going to happen. Thank you. Last question, Milan Antonievich, Open Society Foundation Director. Uh, Commissioner, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, being in Belgrade again. Um, uh, first, thank you for, for the really comprehensive report and also for your support uh, to regional initiatives including Mini Schengen and many others that the civil society is, is backing up. Uh, I have a question that leans a, a little bit to, to my colleague's previous question uh, and that's how we will ensure that the projects uh, pr promote reforms including regional uh, integrations and, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, connections to the European supply chain. I believe that would be uh, very interesting to see what are the mechanisms developed uh, in decision-making process and uh, how it will be. And the second thing is just to urge you to give... There is no time for second. Yeah. Uh, just, Sorry. Just related to uh, regional uh, initiatives uh, related to, to war crimes and facing that, just uh, towards for your support in the future uh, to, to that, any kind of initiative that are regional and related to. No, I think that the, the stand of the Commission on uh, fighting war crimes and, and finding war criminals is very clear. There's no change there, and uh, we are all for it. Um, on, on your first question, if you look at the plan, what you see is a fully regional approach. And this is novel, uh, because we want the region to work as one uh, when it comes to the economic development, when it comes to the society. Uh, so, because they are facing the same challenge, first. Second, uh, the single biggest challenge is that we have very low level of regional cooperation. And this is why um, we are putting out a plan that is of regional design, regional participation, and regional impact. If you look at all the projects that we put forward, they are about linking the region together as one. They are about increasing the interactivity between the different countries. And this is why uh, I personally was uh, very much in favor from my first day in the office of the Mini Schengen Initiative, or you call it whatever. We call it currently, uh, because of my commission colleagues, uh, regional, uh, regional economic area, uh, something hard to remember anyway. Uh, you know what I mean. What I mean is the four freedoms uh, being a reality in the region meaning that people, goods, capital, services can move freely around. Otherwise, there's no point making these investments. There's no point to build highways and railways if the trucks will continue to stop at the borders. There's no point investing in broadband if there are limitations. There's no point uh, 
increasing the digital economy if there are difficulties in investing from one country to another. Uh, and this is why the regional approach is so important in all this and could be a game changer. And this is why I think that f from four to five years from now, the whole landscape could be different in the Western Balkans. But for that, we need everybody to cooperate. Everybody. All six countries. And they all need to work for these projects to be there and to function. And the single biggest benefit will be for the people of this region. You can reduce your emission levels by 60% only by phasing out coal and replacing it with, uh, with gas. This would be felt in this town where you are still using coal to generate electricity and central heat. Uh, you can make a difference by having broadband internet all over, which is a drag on any economic development. So this could be the plan that really breaks the region out uh, from uh, the status quo, the status quo that prevents it from really uh, going forward uh, when it comes to economic or societal changes and reforms. Thank you so, Thank you. so and much. And development. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I hope we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.